Let me start with the proposal setting binding national emission reduction targets for member states. These targets are realistic, fair, and flexible. First, realistic. These targets will set the right incentives to unleash investments, as Vice President Sekovic said, in sectors like buildings, transport, agriculture, and waste management. These sectors need to cut emissions by 30 percent compared to 2005 as part of the contribution to the overall European Union target of minus 40 percent by 2030 compared to 1990. The proposal is fair because all member states will have targets. They range between zero and minus 40 percent. And as with the 2020 targets, the 2030 targets will be based on relative GDP per capita of each member state. And this ensures fairness because it means that higher income member states take on higher targets than those with a lower income. But an approach based only on GDP per capita would mean that some higher income member states will have relatively high costs for reaching their targets. And to address this, the level of the targets for individual member states in the higher income group are further adapted among themselves to take into account cost effectiveness. Finally, the targets are flexible. The proposal creates a flexible system in which member states can reduce emissions jointly across a number of sectors and over time, reflecting also the different structure of member states' economies. Just like in the current system, in years where emissions are lower than the annual limit, member states can bank this and use them in later years when limits are lower. And in years when emissions are higher than the annual limit, they can borrow from the following year. And this gives member states the flexibility to deal with annual fluctuations in emissions due to weather or economic conditions. Also, member states can buy and sell allocations from and to other member states. And this is important to ensure cost effectiveness as it allows member states to access emission reductions where they are the cheapest and the revenue can be used to invest in modernization. Transport plays an important central role in our economy. And connectivity is really vital for Europe to remain competitive and, of course, to ensure the growth of its economy. But there is an additional challenge. The demand for transport continues to increase. Therefore, if we do not do uh, anything, the sector will become the largest emitter of CO2 emissions after 2030. So low emission mobility therefore offers really, really good opportunities for EU economy and to help the EU meet its climate goals. The strategy addresses three core content areas. First one, optimizing the transport system and improving its efficiency. And let me give you a few examples. We're going to be stressing a lot digital technologies such as cooperative intelligent transport systems. We will be improving road charging, creating a framework for digitally based charging. Second point, low emission alternative energies for transport, such as advanced biofuels, renewable electricity, or hydrogen based electricity. We're quite excited about new technological development in that area as well. And third, low and zero emission vehicles and vessels.